So I was playing some games of Pyro with my new and recent TF2 friend Jasper when it came across us. There's no air blast flamethrower. The reason for this is that, well, it's probably quite difficult to code in air blast. I'd imagine it'd be quite hard to determine whether someone air blasted is flying so they could be eligible for market garden crits or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And let's not forget the incredible reserve shooter that had to be reworked after the pyro update came out. But I love air blast. It's one of my favourite features as a pirate player. And while I do think an air blast flamethrower would be very difficult to get right, I think we could at least have a try. So as some of you may or may not know, air blast was added to the stock flamethrower and its other counterparts in the pyromania update of, I think 2011. I wasn't playing TF2 back then, but that sounds like the incredibly opportune time to add an air blast flamethrower when you just added in the mechanic. But sadly, no weapon will be blessed or slash cursed with. So the main feature of this video is that I've come up with three different designs for an air blast flamethrower that I think would be really cool. But first, let's go over the reasons as to why there hasn't been an air blast flamethrower yet. Number one, air blast often takes the front of the penalties for flamethrowers. Every single pyro flamethrower has an air blast penalty to some extent. Flamethrowers like the degreaser and the backburner have an obviously more expensive air blast. And then obviously the flog doesn't have an air blast at all. And even the hidden stat on the Dragon's Fury has an air blast cooldown penalty. So yeah, by taking Pyro's flamethrowers and nerfing air blast, you can make the flame aspect of them slightly stronger. But what if it were to be the other way around? It's important to remember that the air blast is relegated to the alt fire. It is not the primary fire of the weapon, therefore it's not the primary purpose. So using our logic of one having to go for the other getting to give, the fire damage would have to go in order for the air blast to gain. That, of course, punishes the core concept of Pyro's character, fire damage. And the second main reason is, of course, like I said earlier, it seems that Air Blast is quite difficult to manage coding-wise. I have no experience in the Source engine nor coding, so if anyone could let me know if I'm wrong about this, please do. But it's little things that add up to make a big picture, like registering if an opponent is airborne or other things like that. So, to make an Air Blast flamethrower is harder than I thought it'd be. But I had to do it somehow. So, yes, going back to what I said earlier earlier, I have had to nerf the flame aspect on most of the flamethrowers featured. But, in case you don't like my option, I have created three air blast flamethrower concepts that I'm going to share with you all. This first air blast flamethrower is called the Novice Sailor. The Novice Sailor is as standard to an air blast flamethrower as you could imagine, and the idea is get a bit more crazy from here on. The Novice Sailor features a cheaper air blast, and consecutive successful air blasts reducing the cooldown of the other by 15%. This meaning that for every air blast you do that successfully hits an enemy or reflects a projectile, your next air blast will come out much faster. And the reflected projectiles have a 25% increase in reflection speed, or travel speed. This is a buff, but can also be a nerf sometimes out of 10, because, well, players would have to relearn muscle memory. The downtides to this weapon are a 15% damage penalty, a 25% afterburn damage penalty, and unsuccessfully reflected projectile air blasts have a 15% longer cooldown between uses. To sum up the air blast mechanic on this flame dober in simple terms, if you reflect a projectile or hit someone with the air blast, your next one comes out 15% faster. But if you miss, your next one comes out 15% slower. The successful speed air blast increase caps at about 4, so 15 times 4 is the maximum speed your air blasts will be coming out. Same for the unsuccessful ones. And this only works in repetition. Say if you were to get two successful reflects and then wait a full two seconds and then try again, your air blast speed will be back down to its original state. Consider this a bit like the bizarre bargain of flamethrowers. At first you have a slower projectile reflection speed, but as it goes on and as it increases, you get a faster one. Except unlike the bonus being kept your entire life like with Sniper, the bonus is only kept as long as you are continuously reflecting. Now the next Air Blast Flamethrower I've come up with, my personal favourite, the Freak of Nature. This one is not only wordplay, but widely comparable to the Force of Nature. The Flamethrower deals two consecutive Air Blasts at once, each only costing 15 ammo. They fire at similar speeds as to what the Force of Nature would. The Air Blast obviously knocks back players, but can also knock back the Pyro if he's airborne, just like with the Force of Nature can. However, this only works on the first shot. The penalties to this weapon is that your afterburn would only deal two damage per tick, both air blasts consume a total of 30 ammo. You cannot carry the intelligence while this weapon is equipped, or shall I say deployed. If you holster it, you still can. And consecutive air blasts lengthen the alt fire cooldown. This means if you were to perform your force on nature air blast and have it miss, 
then the cooldown for the next one will be longer, just like with our previous flamethrower. Just imagine this being combined with the detonator for even more insane mobility. Detonator jump, air blast jump, power jack, mmm, get anywhere. This one might be a little on the strong side, I'm not too sure, but I, I love it so much, I love the idea. And the last one, the Hawaiian horror. Ooh, this is going to be controversial. Reflective projectiles fill up the Pakaa meter. Upon activation of the meter, using the reload key, your air blasts only cost 10 ammo instead of 20. Alt fire can also be pressed 20% faster. The projectiles reflected come out at 25% faster speed. And the reflected projectiles mini crit upon players. That last stat might sound a bit odd to you, as doesn't that what normal air blast does? Well, then we get into the nerfs of this weapon. No random crits, because I wanted to put that in one of the weapons. And reflected projectiles deal normal damage, otherwise if not boosted by the Pakaa meter. So for a little cultural background on the Hawaiian horror, Pakaa is the god of uh, Hawaiian wind, I think. And this weapon would essentially be a tiki torch. And I think that'd be really cool. Like, I don't care about the stats, I just want a flamethrower that's like a tiki torch hooked up to like a gasoline tank or something. This weapon plays quite similarly to the normal flamethrower, except your reflective projectiles do not deal mini crits, otherwise they're less boosted by the Bakaa meter. I really wanted a meter air blast flamethrower. Maybe this meter would last about 8 seconds, same as the flog, something like that. Uh, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about this one. If I could have any of them added to the game, it would definitely be this one. I mean, the freak of nature is a really funny wordplay, and I would love for the pyro to be able to force a nature jump. But at the end of the day, the pyro is no stranger to secondaries that provide mobility. And if we were to add a primary that also does so, well, I could see how it would be a bit strong. So yeah, let me know down below what you think about these. I think they're personally quite a bit strong as they are, and if I get a good enough comments, I will definitely make a follow-up to this, correcting them. Now, I know the big stinker in the room, air blast bad, but would you rather complain about WM1 pyros or WM2 pyros? Me personally, I'd rather fight a WM2. Big thanks again to Jasper for helping me out with the novice sailor. I essentially copy and pasted his idea onto the weapon, with his permission of course. And yeah, that's all she wrote. Well, that's all I wrote even. I've been rapid fire churning out content recently. Uh, don't expect this to slow down anytime soon, but don't expect it to keep up forever. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later down the sunny roads.